beat America. It's a big damn deal. All the copper that lit the world came from Butte in between 1890 and 1930. That whole time, we were setting a future in motion that wasn't going to be awesome for the people that came behind, but it was something that needed to be done, and we did it. People who have heard of Butte, especially in Montana, there's sometimes a negative connotation. They think about the hole on the hill, right? And they think about, am I going to get beat up if I go to Butte? That message needs a counterbalance. It was a tough town, but we've grown. And now we're telling this new story. The preparation of a cocktail is such a great part of the experience. What's the right way to prep the citrus? Do you want it zested or do you want to muddle it? The ratio of the ingredients, do you put ice in? Do you just leave it at room temperature? I mean, a cocktail is just context for an experience. The idea for Head Frame Spirits came about after uh, the company that John was working for declared bankruptcy. The company built biodiesel refineries. We built about 100 million gallons of annual production of biodiesel, and all these refineries still run right now. Then the recession hit. It was devastating. We weren't really interested in having him go to work for somebody else. And we weren't interested in leaving Butte, which doesn't leave a whole lot of options. And it was over, and that was the night I was home. I said, all right, well, what do I do? I'm almost challenging her, right? I said to him, well, John, you know how to distill things, and you love a good cocktail. I pretty much got out of bed that moment and started working on the marketing plan that turned into, you know, eventually all of this. He said, you know, we could call it head frame spirits. And if we do, you know, we kind of bring in that idea of both the, you know, the history of Butte, the kind of ghosts of Butte's past, plus the idea of cocktails and distilled spirits. And I think I actually like reached out and smacked him. I always lead with the nerd because that's what I am. To distill right, is to concentrate the essence up. If you make crap, you concentrate the essence of crap. But if you make something great, and you concentrate the essence of something great, then you get to try that later on, and yeah, I get to share that with you later on. We sell a product that's based on Butte's history and culture, and that for us is this great opportunity to influence how people think about our community. Here's a little bit of nerd. Batch distill, which is a tea kettle. Fill a tea kettle, distill stuff out of it until it's empty, refill it, do it all over again. The only place you batch distill is in a college chemistry lab when you're learning how to distill and basically micro distilleries. I had come from biodiesel, and so we had designed a system that was a continuous flow distillation of biodiesel, because no one does pot batch distilling. I went to the equipment manufacturers and I said, all right, where's your continuous systems? And they just sort of cocked their heads and said, what do you mean? And the system of continuous distillation of alcohol. And they're like, yeah, we don't really do that. So I went and called a couple of guys who were with me in the biodiesel world. Over a weekend and a couple of cases of beer, we basically hammered out the concept of how this system would work. We had to prove to the industry it worked by building one of these ourselves at a scale that works for a micro distillery and then putting it into that first distillery uptown. And then everybody's like, oh, it works. Well, would you build us one? And so they started buying them. And so now there was two businesses. There's one that makes hooch and there's one that makes machines, like stills that make hooch for other people. Popular Mechanics showed up and they put us in an issue of Popular Mechanics. Basically the whiskey magazine, of all whiskey magazines, came in and they said, this is how it's supposed to be done. We don't really even understand what you're doing, but this is the change of the industry. We've had an offer to purchase the company. We've had offers to invest in the company and we've turned them all down. We feel really fortunate to be in a position where we can do that. The last running head frame on the Butte Hill was called the Kelly, and it was the workhorse. Just this, this monster of a, of a head frame. 
Well, I started thinking about that. And the Kelly is this beautiful opportunity to build a very large distillery. A hundred years ago, you had these guys and gals who showed up to this town and said, we ain't afraid of nothing, all I could do is say no. So they just drill down in the earth and they pull up ore and they power the world. After that sort of subsided and Butte went through its sort of, what are we now if not mining? And we're here saying, hey, here's a new possibility. I came from an industry where you called me up and I built you million gallon tanks. All of the malted grain that is used in, in America for the production of whiskey comes from Great Falls. Why are we shipping it to Kentucky? Why don't we just leave it right here and make a whole bunch of hooch right here? And so the Kelly is about that. Take everything that we've learned here and scale it up. Two people, no investors, taking on the adaptive reuse of a Superfund site into a large-scale production, manufacturing, and tourism destination. That's not something that exists anywhere. And that's something that we can make happen right here in Butte. Telling this story, I think it's like we say right now, Butte America, it's a big damn deal. Big damn deal is an equation. The Kelly Mine project itself is our part of that equation, and we're hoping it's a really big part that just makes a big damn deal all that much larger. It's not just times two. We're talking to the next decimal and the next decimal. We'll be making more hooch every day than Maker's Mark makes. It's pretty crazy, and we're pretty excited for it. So when you talk about spirits, what they really meant was that pour brandy in a snifter and you put it in your hand and let your body heat warm up that glass. Then you take that brandy and you bring it up to your face out of that snifter and that, that, that smell, that essence comes out and that's sort of the spirit. What you smell when you put that whiskey up to your nose, if I can get that smell right, that spirit that comes off, that, that keys in and locks into those places in your brain, then also locks into some place in your heart. It sets off this, this, this waterfall of memory. And that's a spirit, and that's something that I think we're very proud to be able to give just to our customers and to the people who like us. And hopefully it's a memory they, I don't know, they enjoy.